Hey guys, so I got a new microphone. Hopefully you like this sound better than the last. Thanks to everyone who gave me advice on Twitter so I didn't have to blind pick a microphone that could have turned out to be terrible. By the way, if you haven't followed me on Twitter yet, then why wait to do that? Anyway, a while back when I made a video debunking the Flat Earth claims on the solar eclipse, I sort of went on a well-established premise that the moon's light is reflected light from the sun. This is common knowledge, of course, but Flat Earthers still swarm by comment section trying to deny this fact. They claim that the moon actually produces its own cooling light. So today I decided to come tackle this claim. If you try and shed light upon a sphere, it does not light up the same way the moon lights up. This leads me to believe, and many flat earthers to believe, that the moon itself is a light. Somewhat like the sun, the moon is producing its own light. Alright, let's tackle the image you put there. Yes, if you, for example, shined a flashlight at a spherical object, then you could see that a part of the object is obviously more lit up than the rest. That's because the scale isn't correct for these models. You're trying to use a small and close light source to represent the sun and the moon, which obviously won't give you an accurate visual on reality. There are two main problems. First, the light rays aren't parallel. The source, in this case, is similar to a light bulb, or a light source planted in a 3D model that fires off light in a diverging manner. This would cause light to hit the sides of the moon with a more extreme angle, making the spot facing directly at the light source appear to be much brighter than the rest. In reality, the sun's distance allows the light to essentially be parallel once it reaches the moon. Second, the difference between the distances of the sides of the moon in comparison to the spot facing directly at the light source is of greater percentage difference compared to reality. I know this may be hard to understand, especially for you flat earthers, but in simple terms, the model's light source is too close to the moon. The sun is about 150 million kilometers away, and this distance isn't being properly simulated in your model. A greater distance causes the light hitting different parts of the moon to be closer to equal intensity, while a shorter distance can cause extreme differences. I hope that cleared it up, but this isn't even the main argument I'm interested in, so let's keep watching. However, the moon's light is different than the sun's light. Whereas the sun's light is warm and golden, the moon's light appears to be cool. Cold light, if you will. Okay, okay, okay. Slow down there. Let me just... Breathe a bit. Because after the next part, I might die, so why not enjoy life while it lasts? Here's an experiment that anyone can perform at home, and many flat earthers around the world have done this. All you need to do is take two digital thermometers, or any thermometers if you will, and get them to the exact same temperature together. Then what you want to do is put one of them in the direct moonlight and then you want to put one of them under moon shade. The moon shade will be warmer than the direct moonlight. It's the exact opposite of the sun's light. You know how when you're in direct sunlight it's warmer than when you're in the shade. The moon's light is the exact opposite. When you're in direct moonlight, it's cooler than when you are in the moon shade. So if you are to try this experiment yourself, you can usually see a couple degrees difference between the moon shade and the moon light. Before I address this argument, let's take a look at the temperatures that were recorded during this experiment. Oh shit boys, he's done it! A 0.7 degrees difference! Oh my god, this is beautiful! Oh shit, I've never seen anything like it. Just end me now. A 0.7 degrees difference that most definitely couldn't have been caused by any other factor. After all, it's only 0.7 degrees! Okay, in all seriousness, let's see what is actually happening here. First of all, the moon's light is only a tiny fraction of what the sun would actually provide to us during the day. Not only that, but the majority of light reflected by the moon doesn't even make its way to Earth. Although the moon does reflect infrared radiation, any warming effect isn't significant enough to really have much of an impact. Now that that's out of the way, what really causes this cooling effect under moonlight? Well, the answer is quite simple. It's due to a phenomenon called radiative cooling, which happens during any part of the day, really. When the sun is out, objects sort of absorb heat from the sun, and other sources, of course, and they do this much better than just the general air, which can flow in various directions and carry heat away. This is why locations near buildings can be quite a few degrees greater than if you were, for 
for example, sailing in the middle of the ocean. The buildings themselves are a source of heat, which they obtain from the sun. Now, during the night, buildings cool off very slowly. As a result, they are hotter and continue to emit heat throughout the night. This is radiative cooling. When you put a thermometer in the shade, they are under an object that causes this shade. Being in close proximity means that the thermometer is constantly receiving heat from the object via radiative cooling. Meanwhile, a thermometer placed under the moonlight is usually not shielded by an object that would provide a source of heat. As a result, you will get a lower reading for the thermometer placed in the open. Exposing anything in the open will cause a more rapid cooling effect compared to one that is constantly shielded by an object radiating heat. This is especially apparent when there are no clouds present, because clouds can obstruct some of the cooling from the Earth. Conveniently, that's also when flat earthers attempt to measure the temperature of the moonlight, since, of course, you don't want to have clouds to obstruct the light to begin with. The important takeaway here is that the moonlight itself isn't what causes any temperature differences. Rather, it's radiative cooling that is the culprit. I can see from your video here that you placed one of the temperature sensors inside a box of some sort, which not only radiates heat itself, but also shields any heat from escaping the chamber. I suggest that next time, make a more controlled experiment that eliminates any other factors that could cause temperature differences. That's a step in the scientific method method after all, to have controlled variables. Yep, let's throw in some quotes from a book here written by primitive people who didn't know anything about moonlight as proof. Yeah, that'll show those globe heads. Hello, my name is Jerry Rogers, and we're going to do a moonlight test. Where's Jerry? And the moonlight currently in the shade I'm going to get a recording of somewhere around 40 degrees. And then we go over here to the moon light full on, and we've got 32.5, 33, somewhere right in that area. Ah yes, and now we're here with the infrared temperature gun. You know, you should really keep consistent with the objects you're pointing your gun towards. In the shade here, you're measuring the temperature of some sort of black carpet rubber thingy, which is obviously going to have a warmer surface temperature compared to concrete in the open night. Instead, you should measure the same material on both sides. Now, to his credit, he does measure it again later. Now, would that be because we're looking at incandescent light coming down right here? Or could if you, you want to go over there, I don't care. Where, where my, <laughs> so it's, it's the same either way. It's either way. It, it, uh, apparently, the moon don't seem to matter. Okay. Just so as long as you can get the moon shadow, light like itself right here. and the shade of the moon. So that's the shade. In the shade, it's 39 degrees. And then you go to the moon light, and you got 32. 32. Wow. This is where the juicy part actually begins. You see, you flat earthers don't seem to know how these infrared thermometers work. The gun only attempts to measure infrared radiation that enters its sensor. It then can analyze the amount of infrared radiation received and deduce the temperature from there. Of course, that would mean that the sensor doesn't just give the measurement of a tiny point where you are pointing the gun towards. The laser can be extremely misleading. Rather, it senses a wide range of infrared rays from an area around the laser. The further you are from the surface, the wider this range is. This leaves room for a ton of error that you haven't addressed in your experiment. Let's take a look. The surface you are measuring under the shade appears to just be concrete. However, because there is a range due to how far you are standing, you are actually also measuring that plant pot there, and possibly also the brick wall which is definitely hotter than the open concrete facing the night air. This can obviously cause the temperature differences you are seeing, especially because you are measuring the surfaces of objects, which is different than the first experiment you showed in your video. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Six. The machine read the letters. Good. Sixty-six. Fifty-seven. Sixty-seven. Sixty-six. Okay, so this is the last experiment showed in the video and it can be challenged just with the same arguments as my previous points. The conclusion here is that temperatures outside during the night can vary greatly. There are so many factors to consider. The object creating the shade, the proximity to nearby structures, wind, angles, you name it. It's almost impossible to control an experiment like this in your backyard. Now, with that being said, cherry picking is a huge problem with flat earthers. They love to pick out videos, clips, and homemade experiments that simply fit their narrative. If, for example, we had a video or an experiment done that showed an object in shade had the same temperature as one 
when in the moonlight, flat earthers wouldn't even acknowledge it. One example would be the footages of the sun setting. They try to pick out time lapses of the sun appearing to fade away into a vanishing point during sunset rather than any clips of the sun actually sinking below the horizon, which make up the vast majority of sunset clips. Crepuscular rays is another good example. At least I actually come and address your cherry-picked experiments. Furthermore, if a flat earther did this experiment and didn't get the results he wanted, he wouldn't even post it online. The dishonesty man, incredible. Deny that one all you want, and go ahead and prove me wrong. Before I go, I have one question for flat earthers. If what you say is true, that the moon gives out its own cooling light, please explain the different phases of the moon. Is there something blocking it? Is the moon just defective and only releases light from parts of its body? You're up against a pretty solid explanation by the heliocentric model. I'll be waiting for your response.